So on the previous videos, we done how to sand cement and prep, and then on part two, we did how to bond and skim the ceilings. Then we done one on B, and on this one, we're gonna do some how to skim walls, and so use some of my methods and stuff, things I do. And again, there'll be always more videos to come. So. Let's start coating guys, and I've already first coated this wee wall in front of us and the wall behind us, very important, keep the trowel clean, especially the back of the trowel guys, you'll, you'll be surprised how much quicker you'll get on and neater you'll get with a nice clean trowel, and if there's stuff on the back of the trowel, it tends to uh, deposit onto the ceiling and the other angles, creating dirty lumps that you just have to scrape and clean off later on, but Again, keep your child clean and this problem will be a lot less. So, just second coating. Same way I first coated, I go round wherever I first coated. I then second coat on that area. You know, if I start, start at top left, my second coat, I'll go on the same routine. And that'll help you remember where you're at guys, get in a bit of routine. Or if you just keep starting in the middles of the walls and stuff, and then you come to do your second coat, you know, parts of the wall will be drying out, and you may not remember where you started, so always try to start in the exact same place, and create like a bit of a circle, a bit of a circuit, a bit of a loop, and that method will keep your, your memory on what you're doing. Kind of also really works well with patch jobs as well, if you're doing lots of patching. But this is all about walls today, and and as you see, I'm really taking my time on this second coat. I do try to get it on as neat as possible. And for that reason is, if the stuff starts setting and picking up on you, then you already have it quite neat. And life is much easier then. And blasting's hard enough as it is, guys. So do be aware of what you're getting yourselves into. It's a pretty hard job to do. Um, physical on the body. And can be quite... Quite draining on the mind too at times, but yeah, keep positive, um, don't panic, and you'll get there, and just don't give up, and keep trying, um, but yeah, so now I'm the bottom left, working to the right, and these are the perfect size walls that if you are doing the DIY project, or you're an apprentice and you're gonna give a wee bit extra in the house, you wanna try something out, a couple of bad walls, definitely go for the smaller walls um, this background's plasterboard and um, some parts have been bonded out and stuff to keep it straight um, but bog standard plasterboard if you're re-skimming you'll have to check out our re-skimming videos because there's different preparation for that you, you might need to know just depends what level you're at in your training how much you've learned and um, this channel to me covers for everybody really um, but yeah if there's questions you want to ask the comment box is there and I'm pretty sure I reply to all comments but yeah so that's that wall on guys um, not the biggest wall and that's why it's perfect for this video you can see the bottom went down pretty low and my top angle is actually quite neat but here's how you keep them corners them angles really clean guys we toss the brushes and you can do that in between trials or you can do it as you're going and you can see the way I tend to clean my top angle if it's bad we scrape one's actually not too bad you can cut off any wee jobs that are up there and you know if you need to strike the angle brush across like so that'll really really clean them angles up guys and if you do that you can do that after your trial or as your trial. As your trial is time saving. Again, you, you kind of want to save time because if again, if the stuff starts picking up, you'll not be under any pressure and your angles will all be clean enough. Um, so there you go. Keeping the angles clean is quite high priority, especially the fact that if you're looking at a wall, the most most people. Like even the on-chain people, the things they'll see will be the corners and the angles and stuff, and possibly in the sockets and that, um, and eye level. 
but definitely angles if they're not clean they'll stand out in my opinion to my mind. Um, so very important you can see I'm trying basically both directions guys I've been going left to right and up and down basically well, well more down than up at this stage um, but left to right is quite handy on such a small wall because you're covering it and although the walls right and left of me are not skimmed yet it is important to try and keep them corners clean as well because we will be coming to skim them and you don't want to be having to run a scraper or a little trowel down them corners as you might mark up the nice skimmed wall that you've just done so here's a closer look you can see the top corners pretty clean and already the walls pretty flat still a bit softer as you can see but that's what you're gonna get it's only on that's what you're gonna get guys and here's a close up of just flattening in the bottoms and like i say very important keeping them corners clean see the me rips that was from not keeping the corner clean and some stuff dragged on so that's why i give that a wee splash and you can see it's all back in nice and neat so pull your corners out and pull them up as well guys so if you want to pull them out and then pull them up that'll prevent a hook in the corner and um, it's almost like a wee bell cast in the corner you can get it same in the bottom that's why you'll see at the top i pull down and pull across so you're getting both directions but well not too bad guys and measure to perfection so time for me to clean this bucket up and i have time now i've just got the wall all flattened in but once you get cleaned up guys it's gonna be time for a wet trap and maybe 10 15 minutes down the lane again background temperatures all these things play a part it's gonna be difficult for me to turn around and say it's 15 it's 20 minutes you know on average it could be between 10 and 20 minutes so you can let that wall sit up and um, before you start hitting it with a wet trial and again it's the exact same routine as before clean your your angle and work start exactly where you left off or sorry start where you started the first time which for me it's always top left i work along the top then i work bottom left along the bottom and this this is important to take away the water guys this is more important than people think if you leave water like as i'm traveling here if you leave water marks that you'll get dirty water marks if you leave them the whole way through they can pick up poorly on the paint job and will not look nice so it's important to take all the water away as you're traveling um, the water is there to lubricate the trowel so it doesn't rip and turn the surface of the plaster but also if you leave that dirty water mark on and you come on your next pass and you come to trowel across that it can leave lots of tears and rips and you don't want that it can show up in the paint finish as well most likely it will and um, it'll could look like tiger stripes slightly as well and um, although most tiger stripes is just fat marks and from filling in basically from not being neat and tidy from the word go and um, they should be okay painted but again it's a should be you're going to try and eliminate all these things because the whole point of this is well for most people it's looks there is lots of benefits to plastering in the house that are they're beyond beauty but you know most people just see the beauty of it but plastering has plenty of actual good reasons to have it um, just thermal insulation soundproofing um, you know and it's much easier to decorate plaster than it is a brick black wall um, or just wood you know it's a lot easier but yeah we'll maybe cover them in a different video and you can see now i'm at the bottom and you know trailing up pretty nice this is multi-skim and um, this is this old multi-skim so trailing up lovely and um, not a problem and uh, it doesn't matter it's the same methods for carlite that it is for thistle they're both similar products i do prefer carlite i find that that wee bit more creamy but again you know they're they're not miles away from each other so simple as 
and don't forget to wash your towel in between. And here's something that mm, I might have to cover on a video of its own. In the future, somebody asked me about, uh, I've been asked many times, how do you work around sockets? How do you get around these awkward areas? And this is quite an awkward area. You've got light switch, socket, and a bead. But as you can see, what am I using? I'm using a half trial. And uh, where did I get that half trial? I actually made that myself, guys. So there's a video on how I did that as well. But you can actually buy midget trials now, Refina. The, the legs are fine to have them. Um, Spear and Jackson, they have pretty good one actually. Um, very comfortable. Handles a bit strange on it, but it's brilliant actually. Um, but really, when you're doing awkward spots like that, it is about the trial. It's about the tool you use. Um, that's too big to get in around the sockets. I do tend to use the bigger trial to pull the angle and the weird trial when eating up in around the socket. And you can see round the bead there it's a bit heavy so that can make things awkward and maybe a wee bit more untidy so again the right tools in round them areas guys really will eliminate all the wee scrape marks and here we are again for a second wet trial and you can see my trial is spotless and by this stage that top angle is pretty clean so just need to trial it off but again, guys, there's nothing wrong with putting the tussle brush across the top. And you'll find the neater your wall is, um, and the better you get at your timings, sort of the less water you need, and the less pressure you need. But at this stage, the pressure has been increased, and the angle of my trial has been opened out more. So I am cutting the surface, if you will, that little bit more than usual. So all them things you will learn more in time um, but at this stage again it's top left to top right and there is more pressure more cutting a wee bit more water but like i said if it's nice and neat it's not as much water you can also still be taking out some trial lines at this stage and any sort of bumps you can still be cutting them back and you can still fill in holes with your fat but again, hopefully he's got all that in the first pass, uh, the first flattening and the first wet trial. Hopefully you've really tried to iron out any problems, mistakes then. Um, it's, it's really, really beneficial, guys, especially when it comes to this stage. As, you know, the more you use fat, fat doesn't always set as strong as the wall behind it. And for the, for the reason why that is, is because you've diluted it. It's there's actually, you know, maybe at that stage it's it's only 75% plaster and you've added more water and you, you've killed it. So really that's why you want to be doing filling in and getting everything right as early as possible as well. Because you don't want to be using fat to fill in. as It could turn out to be just powder at, when the whole wall sets. But again, you know, it does set. And and on the second pass, it's it's probably going to be okay. It's also why I keep some on the ends of my brushes. Sometimes you'll see me picking at the end of my brush, and that's stuff from the, the sort of first and second trial, because it'll be, especially when it comes to your final wet trial, it'll be better than the stuff you're taking off on your trial. But again, like I always say, you're not really taking anything off. Um, as you're passing through, you're more just trying to sort of iron it out. Um, as that's what's important is to leave the material on the wall and just get it flat, level, and smooth that way. Um, you can see I've chased all the water into the corner here. Have actually missed a wee bit above the socket. That'll be okay. I'll get that in the next pass if I don't see it. Um, but that's the kind of thing you don't want to leave that to set on the wall after your third trial, especially. Um, as that will cause you problems. So this is where you'll get most time is between your second trial and your third tra trial as I like to wait until it sort of goes brown before I, I would finish it off but just showing you here the first coat a wee bit more on how you lift it off the hawk there guys I am loading my hawk with the scooper 
watch the movements. It's, it's, it is hard to see because you do do it in a wee bit of speed. Um, and if you do it too slow, it does just fall off. Um, but you really are nipping the trail to the hawk. Um, and taking it off a board, I have said that if people are interested in watching just a wee demo of the plaster on the hawk on trial, I'll dedicate a video to that alone. And I, w I will do that because some people have asked for it. Um, Batten5, um, who's been actually a subscriber of the channel for a long, long time. So, guys, believe it or not, just do, I do remember you all. I do remember your comments and stuff. And it does take me time. Just sometimes it takes me time to have that particular job to be able to show you that particular thing. But I literally will get to everything I've ever said. I will do. I will do. Um, just may take could take a year, could take two years, um, hopefully not, but you can see guys, I have started top left here, I know I sort of threw it on the middle, um, but I have started top left, and that's the routine I keep myself in, um, and coming to bead here, this is where I think a lot of beginners will have a bit of problems, is around beads, um, getting them filled out on your first coat nearly, is kind of important. I know if it's heavy, it's heavy, but if it's really, really heavy, ch check it with your trial, look at it, put a wee straight edge across. If you find, oh my god, that's heavy, that's going to take a lot more than, you know, three, four mil of plaster, then maybe you should put two mil up it and keep it in behind the bead and strike the brush across it. And what that'll do is it'll stop all slumping. Um, slumping's not good when you're, when you're learning, when you're trying to pick up the trade, because Basically, it boils down again back to timing and a wee bit of knowledge of the material. Um, something that no beginner is going to have. Um, and let's be honest, the only way you're going to learn is actually by learning, by doing it. Um, but my, my, my advice and opinions would be there, guys, is get it filled out as much as you can on your first pass. And that'll make your second coat um, less heavy so it won't slump and slide on you. And it'll also give your first coat time to pull in and tighten again to stop the slumping and sliding. Um, as that's where you're going to have problems when it comes to polishing up. I'm trying to break the camera here again. I threw a few. But yeah, again I'm doing opposites guys. Um, I do like, like doing wet angles. I find wet angles on certain jobs are very beneficial for speed and time. I can finish wet angles very good, um, but again, that's down to been doing it for so long. If you are a beginner and you are new to the trade, wet angles may be trickier. Um, again, I can do them with or without an angle trail. An angle trail definitely speeds you up and takes a bit, bit of the skill needed out of it because you can strike that up and down and pull your lines away. Um, you can see the way I'm working on that bead, by the way, guys. And you can see that I've worked up and down on my top angle and across. And that really will keep the wall more square. And there's going to be another video I'm going to cover. And basically, it's going to cover something about this squareness of skin. Um, something's pretty tricky to do. Um, especially if stuff's picking up on you. Um, that Things will tighten when you're you're new to the trade because you know you're still learning, you're still slower. But that's that's all good, guys. Um, practice makes perfect. And again, I'm, this channel's here. You know, there's probably about 500 videos at this stage. And um, most of them's actually sat and cement because, and although somebody did sort of somewhat correct me on my 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 last one, my friend from down under. Basically, I say it's sand cement, maybe a wee bit more shot after, as it's maybe up a level from skimming. But it does depend what your background is. Have you been doing lots of skimming? Have you been doing lots of floating? So it does depend on your background of what you've been getting taught. Um, basically, and what, what you like. Some people prefer using sand cement, they just like it. Um, I find sand cement heavier. When I was learning it, I found that was a wee bit trickier to learn than just skimming. 
Um, that's my opinion, but it's like he said, everybody picks things up different, and that's 100% true. Um, and I do think that I need to get more skimming videos out, and I'm definitely pre prepared to do it, guys. And I do have some float set videos coming, so to me, that's going to cover massive, massive background of plastering, which which should help all you beginners out tenfold. Again, I do have them floating videos and some of them videos people did ask, how come you finished it like that? that that's not floating of it's not the finishing. It's just the, the background coat and then your finished coats go on top of that again. So again, I do have that. Somebody who's learning and they're picking up the trade or people who are in the trade maybe a year or two and still want to polish up on them things. They're on the channel, you guys already sort of know what I'm talking about, so there's some highly detailed videos like that already on the channel, and you're more than welcome to run your eyes across them, and, you know, 10 plasters in the same room might all do that room 10 different ways, it doesn't mean that it's wrong, and um, some people might have methods that work for them, and basically their methods might work for them and them alone, it might not suit you, and that's good, but is have to sort of, I think everybody should open their mind a wee bit to other people's perspectives and other people's methods and think, you know, how could I adapt that to myself? Um, because not, nothing I do on this channel, loads of things make it suit other people. For instance, I float left to right, just the way I skim. Um, but again, there's, there's reasons why I do that. And it's it's not wrong. People say it's wrong. It's, it's a lot of nonsense. It's not wrong never had a problem, never had an issue, so it can't be wrong, if the job is right, then, you know, you're 100% right, it cannot be wrong, um, but again, it may be wrong to other people, because they don't, their body shape, they, the way they stand, you see, people don't even think about how do you stand when you're floating a wall, how do you stand, where are your feet when you're skimming a wall, you know, think about it from even a boxing point of view, your footwork, where, where, where do you place your two feet? when you're trying wall for pressure. So, you know, these things, like people don't think about this. Your, your body's your tool. Um, if you're, you know, depends what way you're leaning off, how your shoulder, what way you're standing, what's gonna be most comfortable way for you to be floating, um, be finishing, trialing, you know. So, <laughs> a, a big bit of a, a bit of an insight there, guys. Um, but again, you know, as long as the job's right, uh, it's not gonna be both, it's, it's not gonna feel, and it looks right, and it is right, then, you know, that's it. That's the job complete. But, I will be doing more of those videos. And another, I wanted to ask you this big question as well, is, I've been trying to do a live stream for a long time now, and I'm basically wondering, does anybody actually want the live stream? Um, because I will, I will do one, definitely will do, but I'm not sure that everybody really, really wants one. I'm not sure most people would want to have a live stream. Again, I, I actually do enjoy doing them, it's just more of a time issue. It takes me a bit of time to set it up, especially because I don't do them that often. It's, it, you know, YouTube seems to be changing, but it makes things awkward for me. So, but yeah, if you just want the live stream, I'll definitely do one. Um, do have plans of doing some anyway, but it'll push me on. If I know you just want it, it'll motivate me to actually get my act together and get it done. Um, you can see I'm leaving the lines, guys. I'm chasing them lines in water away. And probably doing that somewhat deliberate to try and show it off. But yeah, you're pulling up off them beads every time, guys. And um, because I had it filled out, it's came in well for me. Um, it's getting a bit duller, and you can see the LED light to the left on the wall that's now perfectly finished. But, yeah, this here is actually, what's this, probably the third trial by the sound of it. You can hear it cutting in that wee bit more. I, do, I very much doubt that this is a second trial. Could be, but if it is, I've, I've went and had a big cup of tea and just let it go a wee bit longer. But, between, so... My stages, guys, is you mix up, get your first coat on, say you're doing two walls, mix enough to first coat both of them, then mix up another drop, 
say in about 10 minutes time or you, you can go straight away because it might have took you 10 minutes to coat these walls. Mix up for your second coating. You get them on as neat and tidy as you can, just, just the way I showed you. I try to go as neat, flat and tidy as I can. And again the reason for that is your next stages are all going to be better and if the stuff does start to set, you're ahead of it. You're getting ahead of it. That's the main thing, get ahead of the plaster, don't let it beat you. Then, I give a flattening. I don't really call this a trial, it's just a flattening. It's something I do, it flattens all the wee lines in, it shapes it up that wee bit. It sets up for the first wet trial. So then that, what I would do is a wet trial and that's where I have the, the brush. And really, when I'm doing that, I still just really wet the corners and clean the corners. And I take that water away with me. And again, my, my idea is to practically finish the wall with this trial. Then, maybe 15-20 minutes later when the wall's picked up a bit more, you can do a touch test, feel it, it's a wee bit grainy, there's less moisture in it. You can't all detect all them things, believe it or not. Um, sometimes you can catch it by your eye, you'll look at a wall and you think, I need to get on that wall. Um, but again, all them things will come with time. So, you feel it and it feels a bit more gritty, sandy, drier, less sticky. That's time for your wet trial. So again, you clean all them angles, and you're going to need a bit more trial trial power and a bit more water and you're gonna trial all that water off make sure you're getting it all off then it's time to probably go and have a sandwich cup of tea relax and make a phone call and maybe 20 30 minutes later you can come in with a flexible trial if you have one you can use a steel trial and you can finish that bad boy off and after that when it's set like the wall behind me and the ceiling above me it's brown you could polish it um, I do somewhat polish mine, I don't put lots of pressure in. What I'm doing when I polish walls, to be truthfully honest guys, I'm not trying to make no shine. I'm trying to take away any, if there was a fat mark, I'm going to take that away. If there was any wee pinholes, I'm going to tidy them up. My angles is my main thing when I'm doing dry channel, I'm just making sure they're clean. And I make sure there's no splats from this wall splatted onto the other wall. I'm actually taking them off. If I feel them, I then scrape with the back of the child slightly. There's a bit of a knack to that, a bit of an angle you use. And this actually is the third child, guys. You can see it turning. I uh, just get caught up talking about live streams with you. And you can see I still am filling in. And, you know, where I'm cutting the most is up the bead. And that's why I was saying that's where most issues and problems may come for you guys here picking up the trade and you know that's that's good it's good to know where the problems can be and um, knowledge is power guys and for sure these are welcome to the knowledge i have on this channel and again there's plenty more there to come Ha, 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 ha.